maybe if I just pass you over to Lou quickly, just to, if you could just introduce yourself to us, Lou, Lou um, let the viewers um, know a little bit about yourself. Sure. Thank you, Jonathan. It's a pleasure to be here with you, brother. And, um, you know, you're, uh, you're an inspiration to a lot of people. And uh, I'm, I'm grateful for the light work that you do and uh, all the service that you do. And, uh, yeah, as we were saying before we started recording here, we think that uh, things have really... Uh, Clearly, things have shifted. So I'm in. Uh, I'm from Los Angeles. I'm living in Ireland for about 12 years. I live in West Cork, and uh, I've been uh, uh, channeling for about 27 years. And in 1987, I had an awakening experience uh, before the Harmonic Convergence uh, event. And so I've been studying with Spirit for 33 years. And I just want to say, uh, I've said this on other chats for the of the previous six months. Uh, there's just been a, a sense of dread. Uh, heaviness, uh, you know, can't move it, can't shift it, can't get over it, can't get around it. And it's like something's coming, uh, you know, we're all being prepared for something. I didn't know what it was. Now I have some idea of what it is. And I was uh, saying to Jonathan, uh, um, I learned about all this about two weeks ago today. So um, Saturdays are a big day for me and um, uh, this healing journey. What um, I, I've just posted a couple videos. I've done about 10 videos this week. Uh, this is number 11, I think, here. And uh, what I'm calling this is how to master a planetary healing crisis. And, you know, we can get into the, the, the details about all this. Here's what I wrote for, for today. Uh, just a brief introduction in my letter to my, my, my group here. This is clearly a time unlike any other in our lives, where all of us are being deeply challenged on every level and in every relationship to re-examine our values, our beliefs, and our connections to all of humanity, to Mother Earth, and to our ideas about our destiny and our future. So um, yeah, you know, whatever peace and, and uh, faith and uh, humor and courage uh, any of us possess, it's, uh, it's truly being called on at this time, Jonathan. Yeah, it's... Um... It was really last night. I, like I say, I, ha I haven't, well, I'll just let the viewers know. I, I think we talked about this earlier. I, I, like I said, I haven't really been following it at all until, apart from a few updates from some friends. And then yesterday I got chatting to some friends in a cafe and they um, sort of gave me the, the updates on what's actually happening with all like the borders closing down around the world and stuff. And yeah, and just last night, for a walk just to like get some clarity and I, I really sense into the collective consciousness I like I guess it's one of my things I really feel the collective energy it's a, it's a blessing and a burden to be able to feel everyone's energies all the time <laughs> Yo. yeah baby and what did you get so last night I, I just really sense the collective energy like 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 static in the air like just just a vibration like I could really feel the collective consciousness rising i mean i sense it a lot especially when the ets come in but but then it's more like got an et flavor to it you're like the collective consciousness is more at like um like uh, made up of like more like et and like higher dimensional entities you know it's not that often that you get humans like um interacting with the collective consciousness okay but um but i notice it more and more and like it, oh, so, so certainly in small bubble realities, but but last night I got a real sense of the collective mind and how like many 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 people are beginning to like go through an awakening process due to the I, I assume it's due to the coronavirus. Like I say, I don't know that much what's been going on. It's like I, I sense this energy of it was kind of like oh crap, are all those spiritual people right? <laughs> That sort, of, that sort of energy, like like fear coming up in them, because like right. it, you know the the excitement of of like, well maybe there is something deeper to this reality, which is raising the frequency, which caused might me to be able to sense them in the collective energy field because their frequency is rising, but also very much within that energy field, you know the the, the kind of fear of like oh crap, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, like what? What? What is life? What is the vibe? Like, like it's. I like. I feel like it's raising questions in people. Yeah. yeah, like, like causing them to look deeper. Like, sort of, it's like a wake up call, isn't it? It's sure. like, holy crap! I could be dead next week, 
or my, my, my life, whole life that I thought was going to be real, you know, uh, it could be over next week. Oh shit, maybe there's something else I should have done with my life. <laughs> sure, sure, that's well said, my friend. I mean, what I've been saying, that's beautifully said, what I've been saying is that uh, the work that we've been doing and people like us have been uh, uh, doing uh, with spirit about healing our shadow, you know, facing our fears and existential dread like you're describing and, and these kinds of things, now the planet is going to start doing it. And I, I've literally been saying that since uh, like September, uh, just this sense of uh, like, a, you know, when, in, when a tsunami happens, first the water pulls out. out. And uh, for myself and other teachers, there have just been a lot of struggles over the previous six months that, that were quite stubborn, as I say. And then when you actually, you know, can see what's, what's coming your way, you're, you, may, you may still be shocked like we all are. It is a shocking uh, challenge to our safety and our future. But, um, you know, as, as you said, there's, there are uh, abilities within all of us, yeah, to, to open to this and to make this meaningful and to find out what is the gift here? What's the opportunity uh, that uh, I haven't allowed into my experience in an easier way that this is going to now force me to uh, take responsibility for and begin to create? Yeah. And just thinking about, like, um, I think I'm picking up on your positive energy and, like, <laughs> thinking about how we, we we can like like to <laughs> to quote Bashar, um, I don't know if you heard, but you, you, yes, you follow Bashar I much. Sure. I, I know Daryl. Yeah. Oh, nice. Wonderful. Yeah. 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 So 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 one of Bashar's um, best best sayings is, um, you know, any situation you define positively can only have a positive outcome. Right. Brilliant. Because 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 we create our reality, and reality is. Is nothing but definite definitions and beliefs yes. so if we so if we we say this is positive then there is nothing outside of us that can because we are we are the one infinite conscious you know we are source and we, yes. we it is our free will to define our reality in any way we wish yes so there's, there's nothing outside of us in creation that can say this isn't positive if we choose to define it positively that's right that's right and and, and also and also thinking back to my to my business training at university of course you know yeah. positive positive thinking models are employed in, in business you know sport and everything and the, there was this model called the SWOT model uh, SWOT strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats and the idea is that when you're analyzing your business you look at the strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats but the idea is you you when you are when you identify a weakness you you decide how you can turn that into a strength and when you when you identify a threat you identify how you can turn that, that into an opportunity beautiful and so, so one one way we can define this positively is that this it, it's caused an opening in the collective consciousness and an opening in people's minds and then it seems like a, a dramatic opening in people's consciousness to the to to to, to really just to new ideas about yeah. how to live life. Yes. And so as spiritual teachers, this is um, a huge opportunity yeah. for us to connect with those people yeah. who are going through a lot of suffering and pain, who need our compassion and our support and our reminding that we are infinite consciousness and it's all okay, it's just a dream. And like, even when your wife leaves you and you've got no money left, it's like, it is just a dream and like in a week you'll probably be okay. <laughs> sure, sure. And, well said. Yeah. Yeah, and so 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 like it's an opportunity for us as as light workers, if we can call it that, call ourselves yeah. that, which I think oh, yeah. we can, because I think we're all aligning for the light. Oh yeah. And I think we all need. And it, it's an opportunity for us to like reach out, and obviously not like force anything on anyone or like try and brainwash people into believing our ideas, but it's an opportunity for us to like like reach out to these people in whatever way we can and say, Hey, I kind of understand what you're going through. I, I kind of went through a similar thing like 10 years ago and I'm starting to see that, yeah, life is um, full of ups and downs and highs and lows and pain and joy and suffering. But there's, there's a deeper underlying nature of reality that when you tap into that, it like, um, well, it supports well, us, doesn't it? It supports us when yeah, we allow it to. When it, we ask for help, it shows yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it, that's one thing it does. It always supports us. Like, um, it's always supporting our reality, you know, the law of attraction and all that. It, it can be hard to manifest a Ferrari for some of us. But when, 
when we're like really desperate and we get down on our knees and start praying to God and say, I'm sorry, God, please help me. It seems things start to turn around when you get to that point. <laughs> that's, that's quite true. And we've all been there and, and more people are probably there right now on the planet than in any time uh, before. Uh, beautifully said, you know, here's i I'll give you some quotes from my guides and then I might uh, channel here in a little bit if we like. They say, you're only responsible for what you understand. But once you understand something, you become responsible for it, uh, for your relationship to it. To the degree that you take responsibility for your relationship to something or someone is the degree that you understand. And that's, uh, that, to me, that's like, as you're saying, Jonathan, you know, um, we've all gone through this experience of feeling uh, victimized, powerless, uh, broken, broken open, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And um, all of us, uh, no matter how much experience we have, are, are here every day of our lives to learn. And, uh, you know, the way my guides say it is, uh, your heart knows what your mind struggles to believe. So anything we can do to be grounded, to be centered, to be peaceful, to be calm, uh, to be uh, courageous, uh, to be of good humor, to have faith, etc., you know, uh, is going to serve us. And really what I want to say, my friend, is, excuse me, uh, I'm very aware that this is really going to be a big polarization for a lot of people, you know, that there's no room on the fence any longer, that everyone is being really asked by their soul right now to decide what they believe, how deeply we believe it, and if it's true now. And as my guides say, you, you know when you found the truth, because no matter what it's asking you to look at, you feel more peaceful. You see, the truth is like our grounding. What can we trust more than our deepest truth? So no matter how challenging the situation is, if we look at it and we ask for the truth about it, for, for us in the moment, it will always bring us back to this clarity and peace. And um, as you said, that's all of our training and all of our experience has prepared us for this very overwhelming and challenging time. And it's, uh, it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna put us all to the test and we're gonna probably surprise ourselves both, you know, being more uh, humble and uh, maybe uh, more helpful than we might imagine. Yeah, so, so, so that brings up some some deep topics that um, Goody. Of course some <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so I think we need to, like, as we talk about this, remember that we're, we are a collective, and as we're going through this shift and perhaps this splitting of realities that I'll talk about in a minute. We, we need to, I guess, remember that we are a collective. And so, so perhaps those people who have, who, who have, if there are some who have, you know, caught the virus and perhaps have, you know, been doing some bad things for a while and this is the higher self saying, hey, hey, you need to reassess your life. I, I think we need to remember that we are a collective consciousness and we're only as, fast as our slowest runner and we're we're all in this together and while they're still in this dimension we still have that we still have they still have an opportunity to change and we, and we still have the opportunity to offer them our assistance if sure. they wish to change compassion so so yeah so compassion exactly we, we we need to remember compassion while we're discussing what i'm about to discuss but because it's quite, um, it might trigger some people. It's a very difficult thing to talk about. But like, like you say, you, you're a Bashar follower yourself. I, I was a big follower of Bashar. He was kind of my main teacher in the beginning. And, he, he, and a, a lot of teachers, he wasn't the only one talking about this by any means. In fact, it's been prophesied for many thousands of years. But, but the idea that we're going to go through this split that many people pointed to as 2012, which I believe was a significant fulcrum point, where where, we're, where, first of all, just a little bit of foundation, like yeah. there's many infinite parallel versions of Earth and we're shifting to different parallel realities all the time. That's how our, com our consciousness operates. I can't really go into that too much here. But the idea is that, that we're shifting our consciousness all the time. This is the idea of the law of attraction, what we focus upon, we create. We're not actually attracting stuff into our world. We're actually just shifting our consciousness into a new into a new reality, into a new dimension, a new parallel reality, we could call it. But what's happening uh, as we've gone through this 2012 split, and, is, and now we're well underway in 2020, yeah. is we're going through this polarization, a very polarized split, it appears, where we're going into a kind of negative Earth and positive Earth. And like 
those of us aligned to the love and the light, we're going through hugely intense experiences of healing and, and transmutation that are allowing us to body very high frequencies of love and compassion. And I think those people who are like really like just angry and selfish and really can't can't find their way out of their anger and selfishness at the minute are uh, just getting more trapped in that, you know, and they're probably getting more angry, more lost, more aggressive. And, and I think this is the split. And, you know, people have asked how, how is the split going to happen? And, you know, you know, Bashar says, you know, some people will just disappear from your reality. You won't know what happened to them. Some people will pass. There will be natural disasters, most likely, it, you know, um, unless you align to a super positive timeline. Uh, and it seems that we haven't aligned to a super positive timeline. It seems to, I feel we're aligning to a very positive timeline. Personally, I, I have great, um, like, optimism. But I think this is a wake-up call not only for those people who have no belief in spirituality at all, but also for myself very, very, very much. Like, like, it's like, you know, can I just be flaking around in Peru, like, like, like processing stuff one day, doing a little bit of work here and there, and smoking weed for the next two days? Like, like it has its place, but, um, but like, no, I realize I can't. Like, I've got a mission here, and like, this is critical. Like, for my own benefit, because if I'm creating my own reality, you know, just flaking out and like not really following my highest excitement and my guidance is, is going gonna, is gonna to take me into a lower frequency and ultimately take me on a lower timeline. And, and at this critical timeline split, it's like so essential because because there's of course within the positive and negative there's also like infinite versions of that positive reality so so if we want to create the highest timeline for ourselves, it's just absolutely critical that we align to the highest love light and you know inspired guidance of our angels and guides and higher self and everything and really align with the compassion and what is necessary at this time Yes. Yes. Well said. Well said. Yeah. Um, you know, it, of course, it's uh, it's love and fear, isn't it? And, uh, you know, all of us have all of that inside of us. Uh, it's just what we choose to focus on and what we choose to believe. And thank you for your honesty and your vulnerability and sharing all that. You know, uh, all of us are, um, you know, uh, doing our human best at any given moment for, in general. Uh, but, yeah, crisis uh, demands response. It demands uh, resolution. You know, uh, it's, uh, there used to be a fa thing in the 60s, you know, uh, which was, uh, I was 13 when the 60s ended. So uh, it, you're either part of the solution or you're part of the problem, you know, and that was sort of about uh, Vietnam and uh, the civil rights and, and women's rights and things like this. So, yeah, it's, there is no God who judges us, of course. You know, I just want to say that part of it. Uh, we judge ourselves and uh, usually we do it Judgment and fear are the same thing. Anger is fear shouting my name. Anger, hatred, fear, that's all the same downward spiral. And so, yeah, when we can be humble, when we can be vulnerable, when we can open our hearts to ourselves and each other, then healing can happen and inspiration and clarity and, you know, we'll be uh, synchronistically moving in the direction of the highest uh, expression of whatever gifts and abilities we have to share. So, um, yeah, I, I really uh, second what you're saying there. It's, it is a, it's the word that comes to my mind, uh, Jonathan, is intensification, that uh, things are suddenly quite uh, significant uh, and uh, valuing and mattering and how we determine what is valuable and who and what matters is taking on a whole uh, deeper level of importance. But, but again, if we can keep coming back to a place of, peace, love, and joy, appreciation, gratitude, these kinds of beautiful energies. You know, um, I was a big fan of the weed back in my 20s. I've been sober for 30 years. That was part of uh, Spirit's uh, deal for me to be able to channel and teach and study and all these things. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's finding that place of peace in our hearts is what I want to say, however we do that. And if we can share that with each other, then we're, we're able to help people find hope. And I think that's probably the most important thing that people are looking for, that no matter what the crisis is, no matter how it overwhelming it feels, you know, the longer we get into it, there's more ideas, more possibilities, more resources, more resolutions, more answers start to come up. And that's been my experience just in the two weeks of uh, learning about it and working with it and praying over it and channeling about it, etc. Learn to listen to, trust, and follow your own loving inner guidance by going into peace, as often and as deeply as possible. 
In peace is the presence of infinite possibilities and the answers to all the questions you are seeking. As you sustain a space for grace within your heart, healing inspiration, healing, comma, excuse me, inspiration, comma, and love will find you and fill you. Then you become a light and have hope, courage, humor, and wisdom to guide you to happiness, freedom, and joy once again. Okay, so thanks for being here, everyone. If you want to just close your eyes, turn within, and take a deep breath, we'll send some healing energy to the world and to everyone who's listening here. All right, God bless you, dear friends. So including dear Jonathan and everyone listening, dear friends, take a deep breath. Dear friends, the love and light of all that is surrounds and supports you. And you are that love, you are that light. Shine your light and share your love. In times of great darkness and challenge, your love and your light make the difference for yourself, for your loved ones, for Mother Earth and for all the world. Take a deep breath. We call upon the white dove of peace and of healing, of transformation. For humanity is making a cosmic choice at this moment in its own evolution to let go of the painful past of pain and fear, of struggle and lack, of judgment, of separation, of loneliness, and to step beyond the illusions of separation and back into the oneness of peace, of love, of happiness and joy, of freedom. Dear friends, let the whole world celebrate the awakening in your heart, in your soul and spirit. Let the angels of love and healing guide you, sustain you, and, in, and direct your energies in these times of great change, awakening, healing, and growth. We bless you. We give thanks for these moments. We know that humanity and spirit are in truth one. Call upon your guides, guardians, teachers, and friends. Let us love you. Let us lift you up. Let us bring you home. The earth, humanity, and all of life is sacred and will return to a balance unlike any you've ever dared, dared imagine. Peace and blessings. Namaste.